Welcome back. After a slew of new age company IPOs led to wealth destruction on the Lal Street, market regulator SEBI has tightened the disclosure norm for IPOs. SEBI chairperson Madhav Puri uh, is speaking live. Let's cut across to him. ...of placement of equity and what is it that is the price at the time of the IPO. So, to reiterate, what is the purpose and thinking behind this disclosure requirement is really to give investors uh, a better basis to make their decisions on whether the price is right for them or not and also to share what is it that has been, there should be no information asymmetry, so whatever it is that has been shared uh, with the QIBs, it's what should be shared with the retail investors. But of course, with one important uh, caveat, which is that, as you know, in our offer documents, we don't permit any forward-looking statements. So therefore, the emphasis is on disclosure of the past, and uh, then you know the investor really makes uh, what we believe is an informed decision. The third is, in terms of an amendment to mutual fund regulations, uh, this is more procedural, really meant to ensure that uh, when, when, when you and I uh, redeem our mutual funds, we get the money as soon as possible. The old regulations were drafted at a time when checks had to be issued and all that, so obviously that is uh, very anachronistic today. Uh, the payment systems in the country are so um, uh, fantastic today that there is absolutely no need for any delay uh, or any time requirement for uh, making sure that the investor gets his redemption money and his dividend as soon as possible. So that is what has been done. Uh, the next one is in terms of net settlement of cash and FNO. Uh, perhaps I think uh, people who operate in the stock market will rejoice at this. Uh, the implications are quite significant. In terms of earlier, as you know, it was a sequential settlement which required um, the investor to bring in separately uh, his commitments for each transaction. So for the in the cash equity segment, he has to bring in the money separately, and for the FNO, he had to bring in money separately, and the two were not netted. So this, uh, we found, was not really required from a risk management perspective, and therefore any entities who are permitted to, which are not mandatorily required to take physical delivery of shares, all such entities, uh, which of course covers all the uh, retail investors, uh, will be permitted to do net settlement. And uh, this would make the entire process much more efficient. And the amount of fund flow, the cash that an investor will have to bring in to settle his trades uh, can come down very significantly depending on his positions. The next one is about pre-filing of an offer document. Uh, this is also uh, very much uh, a liberalization uh, and a flexibility being given to the market. It is not mandatory. Uh, it is an option. You can continue to follow the IPO document filing process the way it is today. But if you feel that you're not quite sure that you actually want to go ahead with an IPO, also in terms of market timing, you're not quite sure when you may want to come with the IPO, you can file, do a confidential filing. This is what it is referred to in other jurisdictions. You can do a confidential filing. So the market knows that an application has been made. But the document itself, the detailed document, is not in public domain. It is confidentially filed with the exchanges and SEBI. So that period when SEBI and the exchanges are examining the document before giving observations, it is held confidential. After SEBI has fully examined and given its observations, at that time, depending on when the issuer wishes to actually launch his IPO, he can then file the document and make it public. So this takes care of two things. To our minds, it's, it's a good proposal because it addresses uh, two wonderful things. One is it gives flexibility to the issuer that if there is confidential information in his document, it does not become public until he is sure that he actually wants to go for an IPO. And secondly, uh, from the investor's perspective, the document that is then available for 21 days has at least the first set of SEBI observations already incorporated in it, uh, which today actually is only a five-day period because initially 21 days, then five days with SEBI observations. So now uh, the market will have that 
uh, benefit as well. So net net, we felt it was a win-win for everybody, and it's as I said optional. So it's up to the offerers, uh, the issuers, what is it that they would like to do. The next one is in terms of uh, appointment and removal of independent directors. Uh, again, this is a liberalisation uh, initiative. It gives flexibility to the companies. You can follow the current regulation. You also have an option. The current regulation says special resolution. But if you don't want that and you want a majority of minority, we are perfectly happy with that as well because it gives even more power in the hands of public shareholders. So this option is now going to be available both for uh, appointment and removal of the independent directors. Um, separately for reappointment, there are some other constraints. We are working on those constraints. But right now, at least for the first stage, uh, this is an uh, optional uh, uh, you know, facility given. So it's also in the nature of a liberalization. The next one is in relation to real estate uh, REITs. This is also liberalization. So you're going to hear a lot of liberalization. I think I had mentioned in one of my uh, interactions that uh, in SEBI we have created within every policy cell uh, at least one and often up to three people whose only KRAs for the year are developmental and liberalization activities. So I think you're starting to see uh, the first manifestation of the structural change within SEBI. So a lot of uh, you know, focus is being given on we need to do things which are developmental, which are give flexibility to the markets and empower the markets uh, much more. So the REIT regulations are being changed so that the minimum holding by sponsors now uh, is required to be uh, less, uh, reduced from 25% to 15%. This is in line with INVITS. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, a progressive step in that sense. The next one is in terms of uh, uh, INVITS, where there was a separate regulatory framework for unlisted private INVITS. Uh, this henceforth will now be discontinued. The purpose behind this is that the kind of, since we are essentially a disclosure-driven regime, um, this particular regulation did not have the facilitation for public disclosure in many ways, so it was perhaps not appropriate. And therefore, uh, going forward, uh, this separate uh, framework for private unlisted invits uh, will not be there anymore. So you will either, either have a public listed or a private list. Um, and as I said, uh, to reiterate, the purpose is to ensure that disclosures are there for all kinds of inbids. The next one is on uh, AIF regulations, um, and this is really uh, to bring a certain amount of certainty into when an AIF scheme will mature. So currently, the way that the regulations are, uh, the private placement memorandum says that the scheme will be for a period of, let's say, five years, seven years, ten years from final close. But there's no certainty on final close. So the thought was that it needs to be defined from first close. You can then define whatever you like. As you know, SEBI regulation puts no bar. There is no bar on the tenure that is uh, there for, um, for, for the AI. They can say five years, they can say ten years. Uh, extensions, of course, are limited by another two years. But the important thing is there must be certainty for an investor when he puts his money in. He should know when to expect his money back, which under the current regulation was not facilitated. It could have become anything. So the objective is to bring certainty into that. And also, um, there was a requirement to bring in some changes um, in terms of our regulation when there is a change in manager or sponsor because that is quite a significant change uh, in, the, uh, in the AIF because if a scheme is managed by a new type of, a new entity as a manager or a sponsor, then it's a very significant change and would require SEBI approval and also some additional requirements. The offer for sale, this is another liberalization measure. Um, here, what it is is that non-promoter shareholders, even though they may have 
25 crores and above of shares that they want to offer for sale, uh, there was a restriction that unless that constituted at least 10% of the share capital, they couldn't come under this window. So it was highly restrictive. So we have now removed that 10% altogether. We are saying it is not relevant. Well, that's the SEBI chairperson talking about new um, regulations. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. But more news and updates continue on the other side. Stay tuned.